out on the social media channels on the SPN FC. You can only play under one of these managers in your prime. Now, those who responded made their decision. Yanish, who would you want to play for under those three? And tell me the strengths of each of them and why they would all have to be considered. Look, I mean, you know, I don't know if I can go one by one with everything, you know, because they're all winners. I mean, obviously, you'd like to play for all of them. Uh, uh, but one name we, to start with. Who who do you want to play for to start with? I mean, Arsene Wenger would be probably the one. Maybe a little bit of bias. Had a chance to, uh, I remember when he was in Monaco, we played against Monaco uh, up in uh, Monte Carlo. Watched them train a little bit because we were there a week ahead of the game. Uh, and... You know, so maybe there is some bias because at least I feel like I know him just a little bit other than uh, the fact that we watch and, and commentate his games. But uh, a little bit up close and personal, if you will. And this was, of course, uh, well ahead of the time uh, uh, that he had his best success with Arsenal Football Club. But I, I think the innovation that he's brought to Arsenal and Premier League in general, right? Um, uh you know, the intricacies of his coaching, different way of playing, uh, the way of playing that I think I'd like the combination play. Uh, and I don't even want to go into the Invincibles per se, but I mean, it's a special, uh, you know, something special that, of course, Mourinho accomplished in many different ways. And Sir Alex Ferguson, of course, a legend himself in terms of what he's done in the Premier League. Uh, 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 so, so, but, but I just think the calm mentality I think sort of even when you're winning and losing would probably suit me. Not a lot of drama with him, which I think uh, in terms of my character would have been uh, uh, good. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson would probably be second. Mourinho just too cynical. And although I think she, he gets short end of the stick because we, we know that he's a little bit different on the inside than he projects on the outside, you can sense it that he's a much different manager uh, when things aren't going his way. And yeah. even though many have said that this is the way he protects his players, I don't necessarily think that's always the case with some of the clubs that he's coached. Players feel it. You know, that fighting spirit, maybe the fighting spirit of Sir Alex Ferguson when things weren't going well, where everybody responded immediately, that would have been my second, you know, close to Arsene Wenger. Uh, but too cynical and too much drama with Mourinho for me. We'll get to Fergie and we'll get to Mourinho in just a second. But Arsene Wenger's 74 now. When he left Arsenal in 2018, he was 69, about to become 70 years old. So there's probably still a lot of management left in him. But after as long as he had at Arsenal, did you think he was maybe going to have a year or two out and then get back into management? And is it a shame that he's been lost? the management game well i think it's yeah it's a shame i think i think we all thought that perhaps uh but but did you not feel that and i think the same goes for sir alex ferguson that, that these two guys with the rivalry they had in particular not that Mourinho didn't have it either but i mean you can sense it that there were club legends and one club managers and mm -hmm. and i think that's what prevented uh uh, uh arson wenger and sir alex ferguson you know part of it may be age uh, too, but I just think they felt that they could never uh, rebuild any club to that degree. I also think that they also truly believe that it takes time. And in this day and age, Mark, you know, look at this. I mean, you know, you get four or five months, you know, Potter, and yeah, there's so many yeah. managers that you lose five, six, or seven games, mm -hmm. and everybody loses patience. And I think they were conscious of that because they knew how long it took, how much sweat uh, they had to put into that uh, to, to Manchester United and Arsenal in general. Uh, and they just felt that at their age, there's no chance they would have been given that sort of time. Okay, Sir Alex Ferguson, I'm surprised you didn't have him as your number one after he won the Scottish First Division with St. Mm -hmm. Mirren in 1976-77. Mm -hmm. um, he's my number one, of course, even though he beat Hearts with his Aberdeen side in 85-86. Quick story, by the way, about Sir Alex Ferguson. Um, there's a man uh, who's sadly no longer with us called Wallace Mercer, who was the chairman of Hearts. One of his dafter ideas was to try and merge Hearts and Hibs. That didn't work. One of his brighter ideas was to approach Sir Alex Ferguson at the World Cup in Italy in 1990 and offer him the Hearts job. He turned it down. That was when, if you remember, he just won the FA Cup, Lee Martin's goal. He was struggling a little bit at Man United, and then he really kicked on. So it could have been very different, and he could have been the greatest manager of all time with Heart of Midlothian. Anyway. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing that it didn't happen. 
No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> like, it's but, your by, team. <laughs> by the way, in the David Beckham documentary on, on Netflix, they're talking about Gary Neville's talking about it. They're talking about Fergie wanting kind of everybody at the club to be mini-me's and Beckham at the start because kind of didn't really get that. But I think even we're seeing that now. Wayne Rooney was in at 6.30 in the morning on his first day at Derby County after leaving DC United because that's what Fergie did. First in, last out. I suppose they're very different managers, aren't they? You've spoken about Mourinho and how it's probably more all about him. I thought he was a much better manager way back when he won the Champions League and won the UEFA Cup with, with Porto. But things have moved on. Fergie was able to adapt, wasn't he, to different scenarios over a heck of a long time. Well, yeah, and it will make him different and Arsene Wenger to a large degree because I don't think Jose Mourinho ever had that uh, was the total control of the club. And that's mm -hmm. that's unusual. That has changed also, not just the players, not just the times, but the way they ran uh, uh, that club, right? Everybody understood when they walked in early in the morning, uh, not just uh, not just the players, but the backroom staff and everybody involved uh, in the training ground uh, knew exactly that the boss was in. Uh, it wasn't just figurative uh, to say the boss was in. So uh, I think they understood what it takes uh, to get the club, but I think that was uh, maybe a sign of the times uh, and, and maybe another reason why Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger in particular never took another job. Mm -hmm.